There's quite a bit new in iOS 17.5, like... If you're a fan of videos like this, thumbs up and let us know. But what's really interesting is what we don't see. What does iOS 17.5 teach us about the upcoming iPad Pro, scheduled to release next month? Have a look. So here it is folks, the iOS 17.5 beta. And of course, as we always do, gonna check out that build number. So we'll mosey on over to settings general about. And at the top, you see iOS version 17.5. We tap on that, get some details. 21F5048F is the build number, but no real release notes to speak of there. Another new feature is a new Quartals game for Apple News Plus subscribers. So if you go to Apple News and you scroll down until you get to the puzzles, you'll find a brand new game called Quartals. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Um, Quartals? Quartals? Ah, whatever, quartiles, let's call it that. So the whole premise of this game is to create words using the available tiles. And if we go to the little ellipsis and select how to play, it walks you through the premise of the game. So it starts with a tile and then you can select tiles to form words. So in this case, artistically, you can see that is four tiles along a R T, but each individual tile is actually a word as well when combined together. So art, artist, artistic, artistically. So that's four words right there that you can make from those four tiles. So you have those words, they're all mixed up and shuffled and you can select those tiles to make different words. Four tiles equals a quartile. And if you find all five quartiles, you get a 40 point bonus on top of the points that you get for each word. So if you're a big fan of word games and you're an Apple News Plus subscriber, be sure to check out quartiles uh, in the game section. So now I'm gonna create a couple of words. So wonder. That's uh, two points right there. And you can see the word I created earlier already, serenity. There's another ponder. And you also see that shuffle button. You can shuffle your words as well so you can get a different look at what's available. Now, another feature that's new is Game Center integration within Apple News Games. So that's kind of cool. So you can follow your leaderboards. You can see how you compete against your friends and also globally. And this not only works for Cordell's, but it also works for the other games as well, such as the crossword puzzle. So what do you think about these new Apple News Plus features? Let me know down below in the comments. And in 17.5, Apple introduces a new unwanted tracking system. So currently iOS will tell you if an unknown AirTag is in your vicinity following you. But 17.5 will also help you identify tracking accessories, even if they're not Find My certified. So if an unknown tracker is following you, it'll tell you this item isn't certified on the Apple Find My Network. You can disable this item and stop it from sharing your location with its owner. And then it'll point you to the manufacturer's website to learn how to disable that particular tracker. And in the EU, the 17.5 beta introduces the capability to install applications directly from a developer's website. Of course, there are a lot of other factors involved with web distribution, but the groundwork has been laid. And in 17.5, again, we get the color match podcast widget. Uh, so I'm going to add the large widget to my home screen. And you're going to notice that the color of the widget changes based on the podcast artwork. Uh, so you can see Visioneers there, get the nice gray podcast artwork. But if I skip over to 9 to 5 Mac happy hour, you'll see the podcast artwork change to blue to match the happy hour artwork. And if I play ATP, you'll see it change over to a darker color like that, black. And of course, if I play over time, you can see it changes to orange. And the Books app has been updated with a new reading goal design. So very subtle update here, but you can see in the upper right hand corner, the new reading goal. Uh, you see the little zero there showing I have zero minutes of the five minute reading goal so far. But if I go ahead and tap keep reading, yeah, I know. Don't judge my reading material, folks. Uh, but the point is, once I've read, as you can see, I've simulated reading a minute, and if I go back to the reading goal, you can see it adjust accordingly. So on the previous version of iOS, you can see the reading goal is actually a little bit different in the upper left-hand corner. Now there's also passkeys access for web browsers. It now gets a glyph there within the settings app under privacy and security. And 17.5 features four new iPad models showcased by their model identifiers, iPad 16.3 and 16.4, representing the 11-inch iPads, the Wi-Fi and cellular versions, 
and then iPad 16.5 and 16.6, representing both new 13-inch iPad Pros, the Wi-Fi version, and the Wi-Fi Plus cellular version. So it's been long rumored that the new iPad Pro will feature an OLED display, and now the model identifiers line up with new firmware that are only for these new models. So that lends further evidence that we're getting brand new displays with this new iPad. Now, Apple has been shipping OLED displays in a smartphone since the iPhone 10. And over the years, this technology has improved a lot. Let's take a look at a few of the improvements. The iPhone 10 was the first OLED display for iPhone. Super Retina HD was the marketing term. 625 nits of brightness, no HDR, and a 1 million to 1 contrast ratio. The iPhone 11 Pro was a significant step up. Super Retina XDR display it had HDR, 800 nits of brightness, 1200 nits peak brightness, 2 million to 1 contrast ratio. We got another significant leak with the 13 Pro. It featured ProMotion on the iPhone for the first time, 1,000 nits of brightness in 1,200 nits of peak brightness. And the iPhone 14 slash 15 Pro was another leap. You get 1,600 nits of peak brightness for HDR and 2,000 nits for outdoor. There's also the introduction of the always-on display. So the 11-inch iPad Pro has been behind its 12.9-inch counterpart. It is a liquid retina display only 600 nits of brightness, no HDR capability. Now the 12.9 inch iPad Pro was a liquid retina XDR display. So it's not OLED, but it featured mini LED, almost 2,600 local dimming zones, 600 nits of brightness, but 1,600 nits of peak brightness for excellent HDR capability. It features a significantly better display than its 11 inch counterpart. So Apple's OLED displays have matured to the point to where they're ready for prime time on a large display like the iPad Pro. But that's not the only takeaway. In this year's iPad Pro release, we should finally have display parity between the 11 inch version and the 13 inch version. In 17.5, we also learned the code names for the next generation iPad Pro. The first one, DP875. This is an LG panel and it features the code name Vinca. Now I am no botanist, but Vinca is a type of flower that's native to Europe. It's a part of the periwinkle family. And the other panel, S6TUUP1, with code name Ganari, I probably botched that, but it's a Forsythia or Korean golden bell flower. Now, interesting side note about these panels. These are Samsung and LG panels. You can see right there, LGD, which appropriately stands for LG display. Now, what's interesting is that You'll find firmwares for the LG display for all four models. So that includes 16.3, 16.4, 16.5, and 16.6 feature LG panels. Whereas the Ganeri panels, these are Samsung panels, and they are only present for 16.3 and 16.4, the 11-inch iPad. So what's interesting, this lines right up with an earlier report from analyst Ross Young that suggests that production of the new 11-inch iPad Pro is falling behind the 12.9-inch model. According to Young, OLED screens for the 11-inch iPad Pro are currently in production by Samsung Display. However, LG will also produce an 11-inch display. Now, there are also matte display rumors. So we know Apple has produced a matte display, a nano textured glass display for the Pro Display XDRs, a $1,000 premium over the regular. And for the studio display, it was a $300 premium. And there was also a nano texture option for the now discontinued 27-inch 5K iMac. And all these nano texture displays came with this, the Apple polishing cloth. In fact, this polishing cloth launched alongside the Pro Display XDR. And the interesting thing about about this nano texture display is that it's very sensitive. It can be easily damaged. In fact, Apple says you should only clean it with this special polishing cloth. And if you didn't follow the guidelines, you could possibly damage your display. In fact, Apple created a support document for cleaning the nano texture glass. And you can see right here, never use any other cloth to clean the nano texture glass. So with all that being said, if this rumor is true, I'm really interested to see how it will be pulled off. Will they put the diffusion layer below the glass? How will Apple go about making it so that the Apple Pencil doesn't damage the display? Or maybe they have some other sort of technology instead of nano texture that they will implement uh, for the iPad specifically. What do you guys think? Would you like to have a texture display, not just for the ambient light rejection, but also for the texture that it may provide for the drawing experience? Let me know down below. 
Another iPad Pro feature that is rumored is a landscape camera. Finally, this will be so nice because it's always so awkward to have a FaceTime conversation when the camera is to the side and you have the iPad in landscape mode. It just doesn't work all that well. But this won't be the first iPad with a landscape oriented camera. No, the 10th generation iPad already has it. As you can see right here, and I will be extremely happy to finally have this feature on the iPad Pro. Now it's also rumored that we will get a new Magic Keyboard, which is like a finally, right? I mean, the current generation Magic Keyboard is great. Don't get me wrong, it's probably the best accessory available for the iPad Pro, but it could use some improvement. And it looks like that is exactly what will happen according to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman. So this revamped Magic Keyboard will look more like a actual laptop and adds a larger trackpad as well. Just to make it clear, my whole thing is I think they will get rid of this like secondary hinge right here so that the iPad can rest flat against this and allow the keyboard to be moved up. And this primary hinge would obviously have to have a lot more range uh, so that that would work. But if they were going to do it, that's probably how I would envision them doing it. So let's compare the current generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So you can see, you know, similar form factors, right? But there's definitely some differences. First of all, the double hinge design. So basically you have one hinge and then you have a second hinge that allows the screen to tilt like that. Uh, not very laptop like, right? Because what happens is that the keyboard has to be moved down to accommodate for the screen location. And that means a smaller trackpad as well. So it would be nice if the redesigned Magic Keyboard moved the keys closer to the display, which would give you a larger trackpad and more wrist rest area, more like that of a laptop. But in my opinion, this will require Apple to basically reinvent its hinge design, get rid of the double hinge and go with a single hinge design so it's closer to that of a laptop. And while we're on the subject of the Magic Keyboard, Let's talk IO. So on the iPad Pro, you only have one Thunderbolt port, but you do have this USB-C port here for trickle charging on the Magic Keyboard. So what I'm hoping for is that Apple updates the pin connectors on the Magic Keyboard and the iPad to be higher bandwidth. So at the very least, you could have USB three speeds. You could have data connectivity on this port as well, which is gonna give you a lot more flexibility. In addition, Apple Pencil 3 will launch with Find My Support alongside the new iPad Pro, and that's a great thing. I have two Apple Pencils here because I actually lost one of them and found it later, but I had, it was too late. I had already bought another Apple Pencil by then. But 9to5Mac has confirmed via internal files in iOS 17.4, that Apple Pencil 3 will work with the Find My app. Now it's unclear at this point whether the new Apple Pencil will have ultra wideband technology built right in, or if it will show the last location on the map. Either way, it's going to work with the Find My network, which is a welcome change. Another rumor suggests we could see magnetic tips on the Apple Pencil 3. The first generation and second generation Apple Pencils, of course, had the screw on tips that you could replace like this, but magnetic tips not only would be easier to swap out, and according to rumors, they'll come in different shapes for different artistic applications like painting and drawing. According to iOS 17.5, Apple Pencil 3 will gain even more functionality. In iOS 17.5, 9to5Mac has located new events in I.O. Kit that suggest that there will be pressure sensitive gestures for the Apple Pencil 3. In fact, there are three of them. There is squeeze, long squeeze, and double squeeze. Now, of course, gestures in the Apple Pencil are not new. On the second generation Apple Pencil, you can do a double tap gesture to switch between tools, color palettes, ink attributes, etc. Just like this. But of course, it's quite limited and it is not pressure sensitive at all. And in iPadOS 17.4, Apple introduced a new Pencil Kit API, Pencil Kit 3. Now it's unclear what this actually brings to the table, but we're pretty sure it will require new hardware in order to take full advantage, hence Apple Pencil 3. Now, according to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, we should see the new iPad Pro launch in the second week of May alongside things like the iPad Air refresh. So that means we'll definitely see iOS 17.5 sometime in May. So what do you guys think about iOS 17.5? It has plenty of goodies for your iPhone, but it also means lots of new exciting features for iPad users as well. If you appreciate videos like this, be sure to leave us a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac.